Okay, today's video is uh, identifying uh, functions, which are just special types of relations. So a relation is just sim simply how x and y compare to each other. Another way to think about it is it's a set of ordered pairs. Um, how do we show sets of ordered pairs well? Um, one way we can do it is to put it in set notation. So an ordered pair, remember, is parentheses uh, separating the, a comma with the x and y coordinate, and then in braces. Uh, you can also do a table. We know how to do a table. So x's go in the first column, y's go in the second. Um, the new thing for today is what is called a map. And the whole reason we use maps is to determine if a relation is a function. And here's an example of a map. So you have the domain and you have a range. Uh, you can use ovals, you can use circles. The domain is on the left because if you look at this table, all of my inputs, so domain we're going to define as a set of inputs or x's and then the range is your set of outputs or y's um, and the way you think about it is d comes before r so inputs come before outputs okay so the map is here domain range um, also you can graph them and of course you can come up with an equation to see how these two are related but a function is defined as each inputting input having only one output. So another way to think about this is you cannot have a greedy x, but it's okay to have a popular y. So no greedy x's, popular y's, okay. So let's take a look at this and do now number one. So your goal is to figure out <clears throat> if each uh, relation shown is a function. So the first one you're given a set of ordered pairs, and the second one you're given a map. So if I look at these ordered pairs, <clears throat> I like to put them in a table. There's one way you could do it. So you have 5 to 9, 7 to 9, 8 to 10. So we look and we see that there is a popular y, but x, when I put in 5, I get a unique value. When I put in 7, I get a unique, and 8, I get a unique. So this thing is indeed a function, and we'll just call it fun because each x has only one y, right? That's the definition of a function. This map here, the first circle, remember, is our domain, it's our x's, and the second circle here is our range, it's our y's. We look at it, and we have a problem here, because at 11, look at how 11 is being greedy. It's going towards the negative 6 and the 8. So each input has to have just one output. We cannot have a greedy x. So this is not fun. He is ruining all of our fun because 11 has two outputs. And the outputs are negative 6 and 8. Right? So this is um, looking at a set of ordered pairs. This one's looking at a map. Um, then we can also analyze, like and see, um, if we have a graph, this is fairly easy to test because if I look at this, there's something called the vertical line test, which means if I were to draw a line, a vertical line anywhere on this uh, graph, if it's intersecting more than one point, like it is here, we know that it is not a function because this is saying that when x is 4, y is both 2 and 6. So we have a greedy x value of 4 here. So this, we will say, fails the vertical line test. And because um, when x is 4, the output is both 2 and 6. So to be a function, we need to make sure that it, every x has only one output. So it fails it when x is 4. Okay? So you go ahead and do the same thing on your own. Do now number 2, put a big old triangle around it. And I want you to explain, so yes in words, um, whether each relation represents a function. And if it doesn't represent a function, tell us what, who is causing the problem. What is the greedy x? Okay? So A, here is a map. B, here is a table. C, you're looking at a set of ordered uh, pairs. And then D, you're looking at a graph. So go ahead and pause and explain whether each relation represents a function. Okay. So with this first one, we see that 6 is going just to 5, so he's okay. 5 is going just to 9, so he's okay. 2 goes to 5, he's alright. 3 goes to 9, that's fine. So we see here that 9 is a popular one, but the definition of the function is that each x has exactly one y. So according to that definition, this is a function because each input 
has only one output. Okay. So we have a popular Y, which is fine. We just can't have a greedy X. Okay. This table, we look and we see that the input of negative 2 has been uh, used twice. And here it happened to uh, push out a 4. And here it happens to push out a 9. So this violates our definition. So this is not fun because negative 2 is greedy. He has two outputs when he's only supposed to have one. Right. This one, if you like working in, with a table, you should do it. But it looks like we have, again, a popular Y. 13 in this case is popular. But each X has only one Y. So this is fun for the same reason. Because each X has only one Y. All right. And then the graph... <clears throat> If we look at it, if we draw vertical lines anywhere on here, it looks like it's hitting the graph in only one point. So this right here is a function because it passes the vertical line test. So we don't have to put the points in a table. We just have to apply that vertical line test. So now here's another uh, do now number three for you guys. And we're going to circle that do now number three, and it's going to be a two-part thing. First, identify the domain and range for the following functions, and then I want you to map it. So here is A. You're given some three ordered pairs in table form. Uh, B, you're given three ordered pairs in set notation form. And then we've told you to find the domain and the range. So when we write the domain and the range, you're going to put it in set notation, which is those little braces. And then your maps, we kind of helped you set it up also. It's going to be uh, ovals with the X and the Y. So go ahead and try that, and then we'll talk. Okay. So for A, the domains are my set of inputs. So I'm going to say um, this is negative 8, 7, 10. You don't have to put them in order, but I like to. So negative 8 goes with 10, so a range is the output. And then 7, it's a negative 13, and 10 goes with the negative. Okay. So our domain is a set of inputs. The range is a set of outputs. So when we put them in our map, our domain values, these three, are going to go in the first x circle. So we got a negative 8, a 7, a 10, and then the range, we've got a 10, a negative 13, and a negative 18. So if we map them up, 7 goes to negative 13, 10 goes to negative 18, and negative 8 goes to 10. So yes, for sure, this is a function, right? It is fun. With the second one, we have the domain. We have three sets for our domain. We've got um, four. The negative five is also an x, and the 10 is an x. And we'll close up those braces. And then the range are our set of y values. So we've got a negative six, we've got a seven, and then we have a negative six again, so we won't repeat that. So when we map it, our inputs are going in the first circle. So we have four, negative five, 10. We only have two outputs, which are negative 6 and 7. And when we map it, 4 goes to negative 6, negative 5 goes to 7, 10 goes to negative 6. So it looks like, again, we have a function. So in this case, y, the negative 6, is popular, but each x goes to one and only one uh, output.